Hey guys, it's Enderplex. And, oh, I went to see the Borderlands movie. And if I look tired, it's because I am. Because I watched the movie last night, which was the first day it was available over here in the UK. And I came back to do my movie review. And let's just get this out of the way. The Borderlands movie is horrible. It is not a movie for the fans. It is not a movie for people new to the franchise. It is not even a movie. I do not understand how this managed to get published, how this managed to make it through all of the big processes to get a film made. This film is its just so bad. I would, first of all, not recommend you to see this film. Absolutely do not go and waste your money like I did watching this film. It was my birthday yesterday and about five of, five of us decided it was a fun idea because Borderlands is my favourite game. So let's go watch the Borderlands movie and it ruined my birthday. No, it didn't ruin my birthday, but it was horrible. It was so bad, guys. Um, I didn't go into the film with, like, mega high expectations. I mean, if we, you know, take a look at the trailer. So if you do a Chrome extension, which allows you to see dislikes, you know, the trailers are getting, like, more dislikes than likes, massively so. You know, you've got, like, 90,000 dislikes. Those dislikes are not, you know... Those dislikes are not unfounded. Um, the casting in this is almost universally bad. Uh, Lilith being like 50 years old, nothing against Kate Blanchett. She's a great actor. I have nothing against her at all. But Lilith being like an old woman, um, weird. Roland, the super serious soldier, is Kevin Hart, just a comedian who... I don't know about you guys, but Kevin Hart, to me, always just plays Kevin Hart. He just plays himself and... This movie is no different. Um, yeah. It's horrible. The spoiler free version is that. It's the movie's horrible. Don't go watch it. I'm going to get into some spoilers now. If you actually care. But in all seriousness you really shouldn't care. Post editing Endoplex here. Please like, sub, all those good things. I would really appreciate it. Also I forgot that for this entire video. I just ranted here with nothing on the screen. So I'm just going to put up some Borderlands material in the background hopefully you'll enjoy that more than you'll ever enjoy watching anything like this film cheers so the basic story of this film i don't really know i saw this film legitimately less than like three hours ago and i do not know the story it doesn't make any sense so much of it seems to have been cut out it's just weird essentially what happens is lilith she's not a vault hunter she's a bounty hunter i know New revelations here. Lilith is a bounty hunter and she gets a contract from Atlas to go find his daughter. His daughter is apparently Tiny Tina, who is some sort of special person that can open a vault, whatever. Um, so Lilith gets contracted to go find Tiny Tina down on Pandora and she keeps yelling about how much she hates Pandora, which is fair enough. Pandora is a shithole, but um, so she goes down there to find Tiny Tina Roland has already met up with Tiny Tina and they're like buddying up along with Krieg and Lilith basically goes and tries to bring her back to Atlas because she wants loads of money. Whatever. <laughs> then amidst this initial introduction scene, Lilith is kind of getting the crap beaten out of her by Tiny Tina and then she presses some transponder and load of Atlas people show up. And then suddenly Lilith decides to be on the side of Tiny Tina for a bit under like circumstance because they're both trying to run away from atlas because atlas decided they were just gonna blow everything up and take the kids so everyone's running they all get in a car with roland and and krieg and oh yeah claptrap claptrap's in it now jack black is probably the only cast member that i actually didn't hate i didn't like the idea of not having claptrap's voice actor play claptrap because why wouldn't you? It just seems to make sense. But Jack Black did like a fine job. He seems to be like the only person that was putting any sort of heart and soul into the project at all. I, I genuinely feel like for every other member of the cast here, it was just like an easy paycheck. Let's just shoot this movie and get paid for it because there was no love gone into these characters. Lilith is like always moody, always just like really miserable and like, oh, I hate this thing. Oh, blah, blah. Like really miserable. Tiny Tina's, I mean, just kind of Tiny Tina, but it just felt off. I, no offense to the actor or anything, but it just, 
kind of felt a little bit weird, but not in a good way weird, in a bad way. Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, Krieg's voice actor, I just, I don't know if I can call it voice actor or actor, because Krieg obviously spends his time behind a mask, but normally if a person is speaking, even if you've got like a mask on, you can see like some general head movements or articulation of, you know, arms or shoulders or anything Krieg, his whole head is like stationary while he's talking just looking forward not doing any it, it's really weird it doesn't i don't know it's really strange i don't know if anyone else felt like that but it just felt really off um so they all run away in a big car and go to piss wash gully they drop in like a few easter eggs throughout the movie which i mean they were always gonna have to because it is a borderlands movie so they're gonna have to show some easter eggs so they go to piss wash gully and they turbo jump the car. You saw this in the in the trailer. They turbo jump a car through what I think is supposed to be a thresher. Now, this thing just doesn't look anything like a thresher at all. It looks more like one of the vault monsters or something like that. It's really weird. Um, I don't really understand why they didn't just model it the same as a thresher. We see like a few racks and a few skags, which all look pretty similar to Brax and Skaggs, but the Thresher for some reason just looks totally different. Really bizarre the way they've done that. Um, so yeah, that happens. Again, just kind of weird. Don't really understand why any of it's going on. In terms of other Easter eggs within the film, uh, I'll finish, I'll finish going through like the brief story synopsis now. So they do that and then they go off to, what do they do next? They go off to Sanctuary to talk to a few people which is kind of, who do you see there? You see like Marcus and Moxie. Moxie in the games, as we all know, is supposed to be this really attractive woman. Obviously she's a mum, but she certainly doesn't look it. In the, Jesus Christ, in the film, Moxie's actress just looks like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, you know, one of those pirates maidens, but like a really old pirate maiden hooker person. That's what she looked like. It was horrifying. It was really actually scary. Moxie's actress. I, I did not like it whatsoever. Kind of creeped me out a bit. Obviously had her tits out because that's, that's, you know, Moxie all over. Um, but they had to head to Sanctuary, meet up with Tannis. She kind of explains about how we need three parts of the vault key to make, to gain access to the vault or something. They've now turned into vault hunters, all banded together to hunt the vault to bring harmony. Okay, sure. Um, then they get spotted at Sanctuary by General Knox. Now, General Knox in the film is a female, but do not let that have any bearing on anything whatsoever. This character does not play a single role at all other than being General Knox. Literally doesn't give any background context to anything. She's just the general of the Atlas soldiers. Uh, below the actual Atlas manager guy. But it, it just doesn't make any sense why she's... Why, like, it's a problem that she's below him. Because you'll see at the end of the film... Don't see at the end of the film, because don't watch the damn thing. But she, like, supersedes him for, like, a brief second. And all the soldiers listen to her instead of him. So, like, whatever. So, anyway, General Knox has been trying to track him down. They get found in Sanctuary and have to book it again. Bunch of merry men just fall across the country. And another thing that is done terribly in the movies is Pandora is like huge. Pandora is a massive planet. And they can just get from like A to B super, super quick, willy nilly. And I know it's a film and you don't want to have to spend the entire time with the characters just traveling around the place. But my god, do these characters teleport from location to location and they just try and drop in like named locations to try and make you feel some sort of nostalgia or some sort of, you know, feeling of happiness from hearing these Borderlands, Borderlands locations in your head. But actually all it does is just fill you with sadness because this is the context that it's been brought into. So they run away and then they head down to the caustic caverns to find another piece of the vault key they have one they're trying to find another one and the caustic caverns honestly when they mentioned the location i was like okay this place is like super cool in borderlands 2 if you've ever been there honestly one of my favorite locations it's under sanctuary when sanctuary gets flown away you have the caustic caverns underneath it's a really cool location I have never been so upset with a location in all my life. It literally, in the Borderlands movie, the Caustic Caverns is just a smelly sewer 
with some caustic liquid running through the bottom of it. That is it. It's no vast, expansive cavern. You don't see any chrysalis, you don't see anything like that. You just go through a small little sewer area and then you head along down to the bloodshot stronghold which is just somehow connected to the caustic caverns it doesn't make any sense but there it is and then they're down there and they have to get through the bloodshot strongholds by sending claptrap as a diversion and, and uh, i don't i forgot i was going to play some background stuff but i haven't even done that they send claptrap through as a distraction and then they sneak behind into like a little warehouse area where they find the second piece of the vault key and Lilith just walks straight to it and it's there's like a warehouse full of hundreds of boxes kind of reminded me of like Indiana Jones where they're trying to find like that little thing in the warehouse whatever um she walks straight to it and picks it out and she's like oh is this the thing and it's like yeah oh before forgot to mention at the start Lilith doesn't know she's a siren she doesn't know she's anything. She doesn't know she's anything special. It's like the super secret mystery of the film. Obviously, we're Borderlands fans. We know this. But I went to watch it with my wife as well. And she is not a Borderlands fan. And, like, she was just beyond confused. I, I was asking, like, how much... I'm a Borderlands fan. And I can see some things make sense. Even if they don't explain it. But to her, she hasn't played the games or anything like that. So how is she supposed to... So who is this film for? I don't understand. Whatever. She finds the vault key and she's like, I don't know, I just found it. And uh, Tiny Tina at this point still thinks she's a special one, so does everyone else. So does Lilith, still thinks Tiny Tina's a special one. So they get the vault key and then Tannis unearths his. And then they have to escape the Bloodshot stronghold. All the Bloodshots find them and are chasing them through there and they get to an elevator and then Roland gets left behind and swarmed by loads of bandits. And then it, he's like, I'll see you with, I'll see you when we get to the top, I promise. And then it's like, and then they take the elevator up and they escape and Roland's down there and he gets swarmed. And then it just cuts back to Roland, like, literally 30 seconds later. And he's like, waking up. Don't know what happened. I presume he managed to murder them all super easily after he got swarmed by about 30 bandits. He's waking up and he like, just climbs his way up and you don't see him next for a bit whatever so then there's like another scene where they're like having a little campfire we're sort of nearing the end of the film here luckily best thing about the film is it's only like an hour and a half long so you haven't got to sit through it for too long anyway they meet at like a little campfire and they're all chatting and all getting buddy buddy and tina and krieg are like cuddling and like oh looking after Tina's kind of like Krieg's daughter in this. Not really, but that's how it goes. Um, and then Lilith's transponder. She realizes that it's not actually an Atlas transponder that she's been trying to reach Atlas with this whole time. It's actually just a tracking device and they know where she is at all times. The big bad CEO pops up on a hologram and talks to Lilith about, thanks for bringing my daughter. And then Tina sees it from off screen and thinks, oh, Lilith has been a traitor this whole time. So then throws a bomb at Lilith to kill her after all this and then obviously Lilith doesn't die because plot armor she you know they don't have these Hyperion recall stations in this you know universe they just don't die because why not um so they throw a bomb at Lilith and then Tina and Krieg and Tannis all leave to go find the vault what Tannis never mentioned to Tina is that three pieces of the vault key there are two actual pieces and then the other piece is supposedly the daughter of iridia which tina's supposed to be and once three of these are combined it will open the vault and peace will ensue across the galaxy so yeah well they get to the vault they, they put the key in and nothing happens because tina's obviously not the daughter of iridia so then they're like Oh my god, what are we doing? Atlas shows up, and then they're all scared, and then Lilith shows up, and she's like, I'm still here, and jumped down, and she was like, I'm the daughter of Iridia, and I'll I'll open the vault if you let my friends go, because for some reason, she just really cares about this kid and, and Tannis so much now. I Why? Because reasons. So... Lilith opens the vault and then gets siren powers from the vault. It 
she gets her like blue tattoos and gets some wings and stuff and then she's like throwing out force fields onto the other members oh and roland repels in to save the day again because we knew it was going to come back so he, he gets down and, and general Knox is there and then the dude's like thanks for opening the vault lilith we're going to kill you anyway and then this is where i was talking about general Knox. general Knox suddenly from being just like a generic bad guy that was chasing them trying to hunt them down the entire film runs in front of the team and it's like the big bad guy is like atlas soldiers shoot and then she's like waits for like five seconds jumps in front like no don't shoot and then the soldiers are like we listen to the commander and it's like so they don't shoot and then the big bad ceo shoots general Knox with a fucking laser cannon from a from a ship up in the sky and it's like what, the, what was the point in that why why have her change it, 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 it doesn't make sense anyway Lilith gets her power and she starts throwing out over shields on all of the team members and they all get these fiery over shields and they're shooting around like whoa this is awesome tiny tina's floating around throwing grenades and shit in her force field and then the big ship that's above that the Atlas CEO is controlling, Lilith decides to fly up to it and headbutt it and then falls down because she knocks herself out and then all of the members who have had their overshields just like lose their overshields and then they're like, oh, well, it was fun while it lasted as Lilith's on the floor after knocking herself out. And then you're like, what, what is going on? And then Lilith just wakes up and keeps doing what she's doing. She's got a wing. She just keeps floating around and throwing over shields on people and throwing the occasional like fire beam or whatever anyway atlas ceo gets hold of tina and says take me into the vault else i'll kill her so lilith just like flies towards them both and like pushes them into the vault oh god it just hurts to talk about okay and then they're in the vault and lilith steals the atlas dude's like shield generator thing and then presumably the destroyer you don't know you don't see anything other than a few tentacles grabs around the atlas guy's face and drags him down into the darkness as lilith and tiny tina go out of the vault and then nothing more is said about that cut to black in sanctuary bit of a celebration everyone's like wow yeah the whole sanctuary's cheering harmony has been ensued and and then the movie ends that's it it's done movie's over and you're like, what? What was the point in any of it? What happened? They opened the vault and, and and they just said that, oh, supposedly when you open the vault, it's supposed to bring peace across across the, the world of Pandora. And then, like, they open the vault. Nothing happens other than that. And then they're in Sanctuary. And it's like, hey, everything's happy and jolly. And then it ends. And you're like, what? Why did I just waste an hour and a half of my life? So that's a story. Horrible. Horrible. I promise you now, me ranting for, what was that, 10 minute story synopsis is a hundred times better than you sitting through the film. So please do enjoy that. Other shit in the film that annoyed me. There's a point where they show off some guns. And when I say some, I mean two. There's like an infinity pistol and the Atlas like tracking rifles from Borderlands 3. Those are like the only distinctive weapons you can see that are used. The Infinity Pistol, for one scene, she shoots it like the Infinity in the trailer and you see the barrel spinning. And then I kid you not, through the entirety of the rest of the movie, she shoots it like a fucking Jacob's Pistol. She shoots it and then like spins it, like flicks it around her hand and shoots it again and flicks it around her hand. She's got like two pistols and keeps doing this. And I was like, it's a fucking Infinity. She should just be holding it like a Vlad of Pistol and it's like spinning around her hand as she's shooting it because that looks cool. It's like, what the fuck is the point? Then there's another scene. Where this is really near this. I'm just ranting. There's no script in this. I'm just ranting. There's a scene at the start where she's trying to free. She's trying to take like a bandit runner or something like that. And she needs to snipe the bad guys. And I shit you not. She uses a pistol to snipe the bad guys. A pistol with a scope from like up on a ridge. And she's sitting there like aiming with it and stuff like this. And you're like why wouldn't you use a sniper rifle? I don't understand. There are so many weapons in Borderlands 2 and so many, like, iconic sniper rifles and shit you could use. And she's just there with, like, her pistol with a scope on being, like, and shoots them through. And you're like, why not just use a fucking sniper rifle? I don't understand. And then, oh, God, it's just it's so awful. At the end, you get, like, an Ellie cameo. She's not in the film at all, but then you see Ellie for, like, three frames at the end of the film standing next to Moxie when everyone's cheering. That's cool, I guess. 
Um, Roland, the super serious soldier, you know, leader of the Crimson Raiders, all that sort of stuff. He is funny Kevin Hart trying to joke all the time. <sighs> Doesn't work. We knew it wasn't going to work. It didn't work. <clears throat> Tannis, as far as characters faithful to their role, Tannis is all right. She just is a bit weird, which is Tannis. She's a bit kind of like un... Like, Tannis isn't nice, but Tannis in the film is just kind of weird, not nice. It's difficult to explain it, but definitely not a nice person. Um, oh, God. Another thing, the CGI in this film is so bad. I don't understand how it... It's This film had like a $110 million budget, and the CGI is terrible. Any action scene, someone just gets a camera and is like, shake it around in your face so you can't see what's going on and then just wonky ass graphics all over it's really weird the only bit of cgi that looks half decent is claptrap and claptrap's like okay you know looks fine not really in the film that much but when he is there the robot i guess looks all right um i know this is a massively overused thing but genuinely i i really think that they Got the synopsis of like all the Borderlands games up to date, like one, two, three, Tales of the Borderlands, all that stuff, and they just put it into Chat GDP and was like, "Write me a movie based on this franchise," and this is what I came up with because I just cannot understand how a human being could have made such absolute crap. They use so many like movie tropes that are just like so old and outdated. The Wilhelm screams in there, which I love a Wilhelm scream, so whatever. I I'm a fan of that. But stuff like, uh, there's a moment where one of the people is standing there and he's like, um, oh, and where's your army? And then the other person goes like, oh, right behind me. And then the army just appears behind him and it's like, oh, what is this writing? I don't understand. Yeah, I, I really cannot see that this is written by in a human being. I don't understand why it's costing 110 million dollars. This is not a film for the fans. It's not a film for random people that want to come and watch it and get into the franchise. This is a film that you'd stick on your second monitor while playing RuneScape as your primary game. It's, it's, just, it's so bad. You just you do not want to pay any attention to this film whatsoever, and you won't miss anything at all. It. I don't know, guys. I really think this this film has made me dislike the Borderlands franchise more. It hasn't added anything. We didn't want a film like this. As soon as we knew what the castings were, we already thought this was going to be a bad thing. And seriously, this has, yeah, saddened me. The only salvation I can give to this film is that they did not bring Handsome Jack in in any way which thank god okay the atlas ceo is just kind of supposed to be a handsome jack person big businessman ceo but i don't care as long as they did not bring handsome jack in and tarnish his beautiful name i'm okay with it we can just sweep this under the rug let's not have a sequel let's just pretend it never happened and maybe in you know 20 years time we can just you know bury it under some really deep soil and then burn the land that it's sitting on um Jesus Christ. Wow. So I think that's probably going to about summarize everything I have to say about this movie. Don't go watch it. I, I could not give this movie any higher than a like 10% of Rotten Twice. In fact, I can't even give it 10. I literally would give this film a 0%. There's not a single bit in the film that I enjoyed. Truly, do not go see this film, guys. Waste of money. Waste of time. There it is. Rant over. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy enjoying watching, drop a like, drop a sub. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. Don't watch this movie. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.